digital twins refer to the merger, the fusion between uh, theoretical models of some kind of dynamic what's going on and, and the empirical observations of the reality of what's going on. And if that sounds a lot like what science does with theoretical and empirical science, yes. So <laughs> digital twins are actually the digitalization, the algorithmification of what science does. They are extremely important, not only for, for science, but also in the industry. They are digital twins of all kinds of machinery of people. There's a digital twin of you and me in the big Silicon Valley company. So digital twins, basically these digital copies, they're all around us. And they're extremely important to understand if you want to understand the knowledge part of the digital age, because the knowledge that's what we play with is not done in analog reality, but in the digital copy, in the digital twin of you and me in the Silicon Valley companies or of the digital copy of a company or of a city or of an entire country. So let's talk about digital twins because they're extremely important. While computer models capture the dynamic of, of the system uh, and computer simulations run it, Digital twins include additionally a two-way flow of information between the simulation that runs and reality. So a digital twin, call it mirror world. I don't know where digital twin called on and not mirror world, but it's used a lot, for example, in industry to see how in an in industry, they basically don't risk to really intervene in the industrial machinery. They basically play around with a mirror world with a digital twin of their very expensive equipment. The very important distinction here is that's a two-way flow of information. So it's not a video game. That's the distinction between a digital twin and a video game. For example, here, a very important digital twin, <laughs> beer brewing. And you can hear basically, well, it could be a video game. It could just be a video game of beer brewing. And then you can do that and that's fine. Now, if you use it interactively with a real beer brewing activity and you calibrate the model back and forth, two-way flow of information, well, actually the bitterness turned out like this and I measured it and then how could I, and then you fine tune and then you don't have to waste a batch of hops. Basically, what you do is you just play around with your model until you think like, okay, now I'm ready again to waste another batch of hops and see if I finally get it to taste like something. So then you go back and forth with it. So that's the idea of digital twins and that makes them so powerful. And also our video games are slowly but surely or like certainly starting to merge together with real-time data, basically with this two-way information flow. Maybe the best, call it metaverse, call it digital twin or what it is, it is the famous flight simulator that Microsoft has in the Microsoft Flight Simulator since 40 anniversary. So that's what it looked like in 1982. It's the longest running software product line for Microsoft. It even predates Microsoft Windows by, by three years. And you can see in the Flight Simulator, it's actually amazing what you can do. It has the map of the entire world. It's basically a digital twin. You can fly over your own house in the flight simulator. It's two trillion unique, uniquely rendered trees. Real world, there are three trillion, so it gets pretty close, and one and a half billion buildings. It has real world weather, and it meets, you meet real world air traffic, so you might find a plane up there that is really flying across your house right now. And the size of the virtual world is, well, 2.5 petabytes. So you would need uh, 500 laptops in order to store it, but you only store a very little percentage actually on your device, 150. So that is also very important. And we will talk more about that later. If you, that brings us more to the metaverse already into the challenges of it. So here, uh, let me be more explicit. If you would want the entire Microsoft Flight Simulator where you can fly over your house and, and do all these amazing things on your computer, you would need 500 laptops, but you don't. You only take 150 gigabytes on your device, that's 0.006% of that total, and the rest you need bandwidth to communicate this two-way information flow from reality, like what airplane is flying out there and what is, what is rendered on your screen right now, that has to come through bandwidth. And we will talk about that more later, but we don't have enough bandwidth. And we also don't have enough computational power to make that all work, so there are technical difficulties that we are confronting in this idea, but still, 
the idea you know makes a lot of sense of going towards the digital twins but since you need all this computational power as well you need a lot of budget but industries are working on this and you can see here some applications of how digital twins are used in the industries here for example they design a car and here they design a car here they design a part of an engine of the car so you can see here that's how you nowadays work in engineering you don't waste your time of stopping machinery and or to really waste some metal or aluminum. You design with a digital twin as good as possible. And once you know what you really want, well, then you go back and really do it, go back or go to reality. And then you feed it back this two-way flow of information between the digital twin, the replica and the real world subject. That's the crux. And that's also the challenge because we need enough bandwidth and enough computational power in order to connect to make this connection.